Okay, um, so today I'm doing the color picker tutorial. Somebody on my previous video asked me to do it. So before I start, I just want to say I don't take any like ownership of this. Christian Jackson created it. He's amazing at MA. I'm gonna link his channel down below. You must if you're not if you're not already subscribed to him, you must go and subscribe to him. So before we start, I just want to show you how to create the images with Paint because not everyone's gonna have Photoshop, or whatever. So just say Open with Paint. Oh, before. I I just forgot to mention, everything will be in the description below, so all of these images you'll find. So the issue with paint is it doesn't have a very broad, um, doesn't have a very broad color palette. So if you want to use an, a color that isn't on there, for example, lavender, I'm going to link this, or magenta, I'm going to link this down below, it's called Color Cop. Basically, you take the magnifying glass, put it over, so it's just put over magenta, and then it gives you the RGB values. So you can then go into paint and say, edit colors, 255, 255, add to custom colors, and then just say OK, and then it's there. So you select that, and then you can fill it in. So for the unfold one, you just click on the outside here, and then for the fold, you click on the inside there. So that's it in terms of the images. And as I said, all of the images will be down below. So the reason I'm doing the color picker tutorial is because... Christian Jackson did one and he went in depth. The only thing I don't like is that he has the mentality, well not the mentality, the kind of like the idea that if you want something, you must do it yourself. I have the idea that I'm going to show you how to do it and then I'm going to give you the tools to do it. So as I messed up there, but he's, he's like, I'll show you how to do it. I'm just not going to give you what you need to do. You must do that yourself. So I'm going to show you everything you need. I'm going to give you the macros. I've created macros that will create user variables that will copy images. Basically, if you use my stuff, you will be up and running in under 10 minutes. So the first thing we need to do is, even though it sounds weird, is because it's a layout view, you have to actually have a um, something patched, or else a layout view won't work. So just patch it to a random universe. I think that yeah. So just you just need to patch something. Well, let me just actually give it a patch. Um, let me just give it a patch. So there. So that that's just so that if you I was doing this on a blank show file, it'll work. Obviously, if you have a show file where you've got stuff in already, there's no need to do this. So I just need to do this quickly. Obviously, if you've got a show file where you've got stuff in already, there's no need to do that. So let's start by creating a macro pool. So macros, store there, macros. Now let us create an image pool. Images, I'll install that there. Images. So now you need to import stuff. So go import, import macros. The first macro we need to import is the image variable creator one. So import that. Then the next one you'll need to import, obviously these will all be together, is image variable fixer. It'll be called image variable creator two. I just haven't renamed it yet. And as well as image copier. Obviously all three of these will be in the description below so you can import them. So now let's go into macros. We need to run image variable creator one and image variable creator two. It'll be image variable creator two, but I might have just called that because I haven't bothered to go and change it yet. So you'll see now it's actually just created all your labels. So that's all it does. So now we can actually go and start importing images. So we can go, actually, no, do we import images or create? Let's, let's import the macros first, the actual color picker macros. Let's go import macros, GUI color picker, and then shift and select all, and import it at macro 800. That's just where I like to import it to. So that's important now. Now the only issue is when it imports, it looks like a mess, basically. You can see it's like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're just going to organize it a bit. So if you're on PC, hold down control and M if you have shortcuts. And what that'll do is it means that you can actually just drag it across. So I just so if you drag, there's no need to press Control M, Control M, Control M, and then drag. If you get what I'm saying. So this is another thing I learned from Christian because, as I said, he's kind of good at it. So then you can just drag these all across. Yes. So obviously not everyone's going to have the same color palette as I have, because I use white or no color, depending on what you want to call it. Red, orange, yellow, green, sea green, cyan, blue, lavender, violet, magenta, and pink. That's what I use. I haven't programmed anything with CTO and CTB. Obviously, if you want to, as I said, you can sit and do that. 
but I'm but I'll show you later on in the video what, what the actual macros are doing, and then obviously as I said they'll be in the description below, so you can download it, import it into your show file, and just have a play with it to discover what works best for you, and if this this even if this is good for you. Obviously this isn't for everyone. I'm gonna link a video as well to a guy named Jason Giaffo. Giaffo, I can't pronounce his surname, but um, he's created a Lua plugin that actually creates macros to do this. Just they are like um, they are coloured, so they're not all red. They all are actually coloured to the colours you want. And I used to, I use that macro a lot, and then I decided I wanted to have this, so I went and programmed it. But if you don't need this, then you know just use that, and you've and it takes like five minutes to set up at each show file, uh, at a show file or on a show file, whatever you want to say, and then it works. So I use I use that for a long time, and it worked perfectly. So I'll definitely link that down below if this isn't really for you. So let's just do all of that. Okay, so all these macros are doing are. They're saying go to an executor. So this I use executors 19 under 1 through 7. So it'll say go to executor in the queue. Then it's copying the unfilled colors at whichever whichever um, set this is. So this is beam. Then it's copying the image that needs to be filled. And then it's just copying unfolded at all colors. So I know that might sound like weird, but you'll see what I mean now. So we're going to import our images now. So import image. Um, I'll use that. Unfold, obviously you just select all the images, shift and select, open, and then they're imported. Now you need to move these three down one, and then move all of these to the correct places. Because all this is doing is it's just macros that are referencing images. That's all it is. So you'll see what I mean by that in a bit. So now the fold ones. Open. And so same thing, drag all of these down, and then... So, if you want to, you can sit and copy this to here and all, all to the white, all to red. But I created a macro to do that. So, that's all now copied. So, that's about it in terms of what you've actually got to do to set up. Because, as I said, you run this macro first, then this macro, then this macro. That's all you got to do. So, let's now start doing the layout view story. So, we're going to open a layout pool. And just drag that to the bottom. And then allow view. So store um, color pick, picker. Well, I can't spell for shit. <laughs> um, and just store it there and just re references. So now we just need to go check what macros we're using. So we are using um, macros 800 through 908. I just want to check something quickly. Assign macro 700, I just want to make sure, okay, you can't assign macros you're not using. So we just write assign, assign macro 800 through 908, and then it'll assign all the macros. So obviously now it's in like this big line that makes no sense. So go set up, select all of these, arrange, rectangle. For mine I've got thirteen columns and seven rows and then I my intervals one dot one and one dot one. So you can see now it's made it all into a nice lovely square. So the next thing I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just get rid of the background because it looks horrendous having all those weird lines things so just say zero and then it's gone. So now what we need to do is just select all of your actual macros. These are just label macros so you know what you're doing. So, oh, the other thing, oh, fuck. okay, I'm just going to actually restart this color picker because I fucked up. So, just colors, okay, because I didn't set it up correctly. So, what you actually need to do is go zero and then create, oh, wait, that one works. So, just go create and then say layout data, da -da 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 -da, title buttons are now element defaults so it just must have none of this on okay so that's that's all so it just have none of no it mustn't show the id mustn't show the name and mustn't show the type so now we can actually assign our macros again so assign 
macro 800 through 908. And then it'll assign everything, even though it didn't do what I said. So let's just, so now what we'll do is we'll do that whole um, setup thing again. So just do that. Rectangle 13.0, 7.0, 1.0, 1.0. And 1.1. So, yeah, so there we go. So, I just start fucked up. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to select the actual macros that have information in them. So, set up these macros that have info in them, not the label macros. Then go. Then you need to set this to simple. And go image icon. And what I do is I select all of them and make all of them. And then you find the label one beams. And I just make all of them the same. Because then, if you don't, you'll have to go and scroll down again every single time. So now that that's done, you can actually just, just press set up again so that it unselects. And now all you have to do is press the next one. So you just have to do that for all of them. And it takes a hell of a long time. So I'm just going to do the top line so you see what I mean. And then that's basically it. So once that's done, it'll work in theory. So I'll do a test just to double check, but it will in theory work. So then cyan, and then blue, then lavender, and then violet. Magenta and then pink. So what I mean by selecting all of them and just assigning all of them at first is like if I do this one at a time, so I say simple and then I say images and then I scroll down and I find spot colors and I assign that. Then when I get to the next one, I have to do that all over again. But if I just go and I select them all, so let's just select all of these. And I say simple to all of them, it does it to all of them. And then all I've got to do is I've got to scroll down once to spot colors, assign all of them the same color, but then I can go and change that and it'll be where I left off. So it won't make me scroll down again. And that's just to save time basically. So I'm just going to do a couple here, green unfold. I'm just going to do a couple here just so that you can see what happens, just so you can see what happens. Um, Digital, which one do I just do? I think I just did cyan, yeah, so blue. So I'm just going to assign the spot, the beam in the spot, and then the all, so you can see that as well. And then obviously you can sit and create all of them to do what you need to do. So yeah, so, and then as I said, everything will be in the description below. I've shown you how to create um, the colors if you want to. And it's, it's it's quite a simple thing to do because all it's really doing is referencing, it's, it's just macros referencing images, that's all it is. But obviously with um, with it, it's just, it's as I said at the beginning, it's not hard to do, it's just long, because you've got to write all those macros and you've got to do everything, so it's just really long and tedious to do. But it's, as I said, very easy. So I'm just going to do the all ones quickly so that you can also see those. And then obviously you hover over, if you're unsure of which one it is, it'll show you which one it is. So, yeah. So, let's just uh, do this. And this isn't like a necessity thing to have on your show file. I mean, I've got a blank show file with a loader already, but if you don't do like blank show files and you are going to arrive at a show and need to just be ready to go in a couple of minutes, I'm going to leave you that link to that Lua plugin and then that creates it. Alright. So now you can see when I select it, it copies the images. And then when I select these, it doesn't copy them. So let's just go all red and then go to our image point. You can see it's actually copied the images at the right ones because that's what the macros do. They just copy the images using user variables. So if I just scroll down quickly, you can see it's copying. When I say spot C green, it copy goes to the executor. It then copies the unfold colors at spot colors. It then copies the correct image. So that, that'll mean that all of them will be unfold. It'll then copy the sea green image at the spot sea green image. Then it'll copy unfold at all colors. Because obviously if you have 
they're all white, but then this is pink, you don't want your all colors to still be showing that they're white. And that's just a thing to do if you know, if that's just if you want. So obviously once you've assigned all these images, all of them will change. Like if I go, if I just, if I just load one of my shows, just don't save because I'm not going to be coming back to that. Like if I load one of my show files, it'll do it all. And you can see in the command line what it's doing. So yes, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. As I said, everything will be down in the description below. I'm going to upload everything. And, you know, just subscribe if you want to see, because I plan on doing a couple of tutorials. And, yeah, if you've got any questions, leave them in the description. I'll leave my email down there so you can email me if you've got any questions or if something's not working for you. And otherwise, um, yeah, just have a good day. Cheers.